The Kia EV6 is a pretty solid ride. It's got great body styling. I've got to say, I absolutely love this blue. You're going to find the Kia EV6 with either a short range or long range battery available rear wheel drive or all wheel drive with an option for GT package, which is going to just blow away the performance of the regular models. That one's a little bit of a beast, but I think for most people, the regular all wheel drive will probably be okay. But in this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the EV6, covering off interior, exterior technology, what's going on on the inside for spacing, cargo dimensions, and everything in between. If you're looking for a shorter walkthrough, you can find that down in the description of this video. And you can also find build links for this specific EV6, along with the contact information for Durham Kia, who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today. But let's dive into it, because like I said, this thing is pretty packed. Inside of the EV6, you're going to find either 19, 20, or 21 inch wheels with varying styles. You can always do something aftermarket if you're not in love with it. Hydro dip it at the same time. Uh, the 21 inch are strictly going to be available for the GT version of this vehicle. You're going to find the EV6 with either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. So rear wheel drive is good if you're not really going to encounter much snow or if you want to use it as strictly like a spring, summer, fall time vehicle. All wheel drive is definitely the way I'd recommend if you live in Canada. Like winter time driving with all wheel is incredible. It just plows through the snow. Rear wheel drive is a little bit trickier here. Ask any Mustang owner that question. The surround view monitor you're going to find inside of the EV6 is trim level specific, but there's a lot of standard technology you're going to find inside of this. So even just looking at basics like lights, LED lights that are standard inside of this thing, which look fantastic. I did mention the forward sensing system, but even just the overall styling of this thing, it's really nice. Like I love the way that the front end looks as we drop down, but this like black and blue contrast is great. Like I love deep blue inside of cars and this one, just the way that the sun is hitting it, it looks really, really nice. Getting underneath the hood of the EV6 is straightforward. So once you've got the little release pulled just to the left-hand side of the pedals, underneath the I and Kia, there's a little release there on hydraulics, which is fantastic. Now, this thing is very interesting design because this is an electric, but underneath the hood, Kia's got it. Almost so that it, it's going to remind people of just a traditional internal combustion engine. But one amazing thing about having an electric is you don't have to do anywhere near as much maintenance, which is great. Underneath the hood here, you can easily top up fluids and outside of that, there's not really much else. There's a little engine, well, engine cover. I just love the overall styling of it. It's kind of neat. It's got the EV highlight there in the same text as the, or the same font, I should say, as the new Kia logo. But one nice thing, so underneath we can lift this up and there's a tiny little amount of storage space. There's not much. I don't really know what you can store inside of this thing because it's not that big, but it's like a teeny little bit of storage space available underneath the hood here, which is kind of cool. I did mention, so you're going to find this thing with either the rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, standard range or the extended or long range versions. Horsepower and torque specs are all very different on top of that. So it's ultimately going to depend on, are you short range, long range, rear wheel versus all wheel drive. But looking at this one, it's the all wheel drive long range, which means that you're looking at 320 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque, which is pretty dang impressive. Not as impressive as the GT, but for most people, you're going to find even the power in this thing is going to be more than enough. Like, it's wild. You compare that to something like, we'll go with the Kia Seltos, and you're pretty much doubling the amount of torque inside of this thing, and it's like 50% more horsepower. So, I mean, you're going to have a lot of fun driving this thing. It's a blast. Taking a peek at the size of the EV6. So, it may be in six feet tall. This thing is a little bit on the short side, but I mean, realistically, it doesn't affect how you're going to be able to get in and out of this thing whatsoever. Very straightforward. Side view mirrors inside of this thing. There's little indicator lights, heated side view with a blind spot monitoring system. And then hopping inside. Oh uh, yeah, really nice look overall, but very simple along the driver's door. So there's a little highlight along the side there. 
driver's seat memory buttons, which are standard across most trim levels of the vehicle. There's a button for your power folding. Hello, side view mirrors. You can adjust your side view mirrors there. Basic unlock and lock buttons and your window control. Little handle there and a tiny little bit of door storage. There's a, a single speaker along the bottom, tiny little one up overhead there. And this is just the base audio system. So there is the option for an upgraded Meridian, which is available in some of the higher trims. I like this little highlight here. Looks really good. But just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, it can increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen, as well as the multimedia screen. You've got your charge door, open and close the lift gate, parking brake, and then you can toggle your traction control system on or off. The steering wheel inside of this thing, manual telescoping, hood release off to the left-hand side. The driver's seat inside of this thing, synthetic leather in this specific trim level, but there are a series of different types of seats that are available, like the GT has a sport bucket seat. One thing though, inside of the GT, it's actually a manual seat. So it's a nicer seat setup, but manual sport bucket seat versus in this one, power seats so are forwards, backwards, up and down. You can adjust your backrest there. And then it's also two-way lumbar support on top of that. So this is the GT line version of the vehicle. And you're either looking, so it's like a cloth synthetic leather mix, synthetic leather. And then there are a few other styles of seats that are available, just depending on which model of the vehicle or trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But the seat is really comfortable. And hold on, with the seat as far down as it's going to go, I've got like five and a half, four more six inches of headspace there. And then with the seat set up for the way that I would typically drive. Oh yeah, that's comfy. That's really comfy. But, so the headrest, ooh. Well, they said that's a multi-way adjustable even too. I thought it was just up and down. No, no, it's up and down, but you can also pull it forward in order to be able to adjust it that way. So if you need like a more comfortable head position, oh, that's really cool. I didn't even know it could do that. That's amazing. So it's forwards, backwards, up and down with the headrest, which is amazing. Nice and relaxing. And next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Kia EV6. So, a few things to point out. This specific one, I mean, obviously, look at that, look at that cluster screen, hold on. So you've got two 12.3 inch screens. So you've got the 12.3 inch cluster screen, but let's go through some basics. So the wheel itself, really nice and comfortable. There is the option for a heated steering wheel. So you can toggle that on or off right down the center stack there if you'd like to. It's nice. Manual telescoping steering wheel. So just by our left knee. There's a release. Move it in, out, up, and down to find that perfect position. And then click it to lock it back into place. Stick on the left-hand side. There are a few different ways that we can get to different lights. I always just recommend keeping it in the auto mode. It means that the vehicle is going to determine whether or not our different lights are turned on. Blinkers with, I mean, look at that blind view monitor, which is amazing. And I mean, honestly, like one of the big benefits of that blind view monitor is that you can see what's going on next to you. Like, yeah, could we just look next to us left, right? Sure. But I mean, being able to just kind of do a quick check that way, I think is brilliant. Really, really like it. And then, I mean, obviously with your high beams, you can flash in, out, auto beams, etc. So with the auto beam enabled, if there's an oncoming vehicle, it's automatically going to dim your beams for you and then bring them right back on again. Stick on the right-hand side is to control what's going on with your front wipers. There's no option for a rear wiper inside of this thing. But a few other highlights. So you've got some paddle shifters inside of this thing. So it's essentially going to be your minus button on the left on the right side and then your plus button on the left side. You do need to be in drive in order to use them. But one of the benefits there is that you're essentially in different modes for your regenerative braking. So in zero mode, that essentially means that there's next to no resistance versus in your max mode, that's more or less like it's eye pedal. So that's one pedal driving. So what that means is that you can take your foot off the accelerator and the car is going to stop very, very rapidly. I mean, like I've got the vehicle in drive right now, auto hold setting on, but the vehicle is held in place. And that's obviously because of some of the settings that we've got here. Back into park again. So very, very useful safety settings that are available here. And I mean, honestly, play around with the paddle shifters a little bit because it's going to change up the complete dynamics of the ride when you do it. Pat on the left-hand side there. 
It's going to be for your smart cruise control system. Pat on the right side, it's going to be a few things. So this one is your voice command prompt. So you can do things like change songs, radio stations, navigate using your voice. I honestly recommend getting used to the voice command prompt because there are so, so many things that you can do. You can change around, like you can turn on your heated steering wheel if you want to. You can change around your command so you can look at navigation, change a route, start a route. You could change your so your radio station, change your songs. There are so many options that are available. So I definitely recommend getting used to the voice command prompt just because of how much you can do with that. Answer hang up on a phone call. You can either increase or decrease your volume. You've got a few different mode buttons. So this one is going to let you change between. So hold on. If we go into, actually, let's go to our radio there. So this lets you go between different modes. So it's essentially AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. If you had a, a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as an available option as well. You've got another custom button, which lets you do a few different things. So if you wanted to customize dope in your map, cancel routes, and a few other things. You've also got this button there, and that's going to be to go between all of your different stations there. So your different presets that are saved in. So you could easily tweak out your presets there just under radio. But I mean, like I said, if you want to walk through on how to use the system, you'll find it down in the description of the video. So very straightforward there. One interesting thing on the audio side of things is that up and down lets you increase, decrease your volume. You can also push in if you wanted to mute your audio out instead. As I mentioned, on the left-hand side, this is going to be for your smart cruise control system. So once you're driving, you would turn the smart cruise on. It says conditions not met because I'm stopped. So once you start driving, you turn it on, and then you either press up or down this way, and that's to either increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time as you go. This one is a distance indicator. So how close or far away do you want to be away from the vehicle that's in front of you? There you go. Perfect. There we go. So you can see there, little car icon along the very top. So how close or far do you want to be away from the vehicle in front of you there? Or you can toggle the whole system off again. And then this one is your lane keeping system. So what that's going to do is it's essentially going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go. Technically need your hands on the wheel, but it is useful just in case you kind of slip up, you lose focus for a second, whatever the case may be. And then you can toggle any of these safety settings on or off if you want. We've got pages buttons there. And that's going to take you through a few different options inside of the cluster screen. So what I'm going to do, we're going to be using the little pages button there and then the up, down, arrow icons. Let's zoom in a tiny little bit. And then focus you in. There you go. All right. So main screen there, that's going to be, and you can kind of see that there are some other settings that are available as you go. But right in the very middle there, you can see that there are two individual pages. So along the very top, you can see what's currently going on with your road speed, what gear you're currently in what's going on with your follow systems, your turns, and things like that. So we've got a series of different safety settings that are turned on right now. Or, I mean, it, I said you've got the flexibility of toggling any of these systems on, off, whatever the case may be. What's going on with your current speed, your current charge level, along the very bottom side, auto hold. So that's one that's going to hold you in place if you come to a stop and you take your foot off the brake, you're ready to go, what your current charge level is, what essentially what, what's going on with our regenerative braking level so as you can see there we go between level zero i drive which is going to was so one pedal driving is available there as well so a few different options there your current outside temperature what's currently going on with your economy so it's essentially like the equivalent of like fuel economy but just in the ev world so you can see that you're using up 19.4 kilowatt hours per hundred and that's just because i'm parked and i've got the ac blasting right now and then your current odometer reading. So as of right now at 543K. And then you can also go up and down between a few other things. So this one is going to be your attention level. So if you start to veer over too many times without signaling, that's going to start dropping down and tell you you should probably take a break eventually. And then you can also press and hold OK in order to reset it. Similarly here, so you've got basic settings. So you can press and hold OK in order to get to some settings, which pull up some different options on. The little cluster screen there, or the media screen there instead. But pressing the pages button gives you to different drive info screens. So you've got three different ones. So drive info, that's based off of when the vehicle was last turned on. You're after recharging. So when you go to recharge the vehicle, you're charged up and you unplug. How much distance have you gotten since that charge? And then what's your total accumulated info since you reset it or whatever the case may be? So 
you've got a few different options that are available there and you can reset any of these things just by going to the screen, pressing OK, and you're set to go. So very straightforward. Next pages button there, you can see just a simple compass, but if we, let's go to our map, searching for an address off to the side, you can see what I'm doing there. And what I'm doing is, oh, while I'm driving, oh, let's, oh, interesting. So I can't actually use the map unless you're parked or if you use the voice command prompt. But let's navigate to Tim Hortons. Uh, no. All right, and start guidance. There you go. Right through the cluster screen, you can see what's going on. So you've got oh, two different options there. So you've got what's going on with your distance to the location, or you can see what directions you need to be taking instead. So it's kind of neat that you've got that available as an option right through the cluster, or it just defaults back to a regular compass instead. Pushing the pages button gets you to do a little bit more basic information. So you need to be driving in order to be able to have your tire pressure display. Yeah, you got to be going further than that, but it is available there as an option, so it's kind of neat. And then back to just your main pages instead. So I know that's a little bit of information, nothing too crazy. The only other thing to point out is that this thing does have the option for a head-up display. So, I mean, this specific one doesn't have it. It's in the higher trims of the vehicle. That is the head-up display that you're going to find inside of the Kia EV6. So it's augmented reality mode, essentially. And, I mean, you can kind of tell just because there's so much information that's available inside of it. But inside of the multimedia screen here, we've got a few different things that we can do in order to be able to adjust some things here. So let me zoom you out a tiny little bit, go back home, and let's go into setup. I believe it is display. No. I'm looking at oh, vehicle settings. Derp, that makes sense. Head up display. There we go. And you've got a few options. So display mode, either augmented reality, where as you're driving, it's showing you these neat lanes across the board standard mode or you can disable the head-up display as well but i mean with the augmented reality hold on i'm going to show you something here error match there we go so you can kind of see here let's zoom in okay as you go through so you can kind of see obviously like it wouldn't flicker on you like that but it would show you what's going on as you drive if you've got different things showing on the screen so if you've got we go content selection turn by turn directions would show up there convenience info blind spot system so if somebody's into the blind spot on, on either side of the vehicle, it's going to highlight in your side view mirrors to let you know, but it's also going to let you know inside of that head-up display. So it's going to display it kind of differently. It also shows it inside of the cluster screen as you go. Along the very bottom, you can see a series of different drive modes. So three different modes that are available. So it's either the eco, normal, or sport mode. And it's kind of neat because you can see when you're driving in each mode, what it does to your overall kilometers that you can use as well. So it does end up playing with a few different systems inside the vehicle. So, I mean, obviously with the sport mode, it's going to give you an infinitely sportier performance, unlocking some different potential there versus the more relaxed eco mode instead. It's kind of neat that it changes up the dynamic look of the cluster screen. But one thing is that if you like the look of a sport mode screen, you just don't want to be in sport mode. Through the multimedia screen, you've got the flexibility of adjusting that out instead. This is the infotainment screen that you're going to find inside of the Kia EV6. It's 12.3 inch, and I mean, obviously you can see there, very responsive, nice graphics that are inside of this thing as well. On the main screen, you can see what's going on with time, if media is playing, because we're in an electric, you can see what your current battery percentage is, along with your current range that you've got left. Swiping along the side, along the very top, you've got the flexibility of changing it user profiles, so if there are multiple people driving the vehicle, you can have it remember your presets, phone connections, seat memory, and a number of other things. And that's just by changing a user and then creating a unique driver profile there instead. So you can see there, we're kind of switching through as we go. But series of different things that are available. Moving in, up home, if you want to, or you can switch here. As bright and as beautiful as this display is, if you find it to be a little bit too much, you can turn the whole display off button press to bring it back to life again. You can edit home icons. So if you don't like the overall layout, you can just do a drag and drop it anywhere that you'd like to. So you can really customize this screen a little bit more if you want. If you've played around with it too much, you can reset it back to their factory defaults instead. And then there's also a QR code that you can scan on your phone in order to bring up the user manual if you'd like. 
moving back out. You've got what time is currently going on. You can also adjust it by pressing. You've got your current date. And then if you're connected to Kia services, there are some options for EV only mode. So EV only, you can see a few things. It's going on with battery percentage nearest. Oh, that's kind of cool. Or we can charge up where the nearest option is. You can also see what's currently going on. If you've got your air conditioning or heat or whatever the case on versus off what your kilometers are. So I've got the AC blasted right now and 212 kilometers. I'd sacrifice 17 kilometers in order to get the coolness that I've got right now. You can also see departure comfort time settings. So you could, that's really neat. So you can have it depart at certain, oh, that's really cool. So what you're doing is you're essentially going to have your climate settings turned on based off of a departure time. So if you leave the same time every day, you've got that flexibility. Oh, that's really cool. So let's say if like Monday through Friday, you're going to leave the same time every day. You've got your departure one setting. You can set departure two as well. And what that's going to do, I mean, you saw there, it's going to precondition the cabin. You can also have it charge up at certain times of the day as well. Really, really useful. Nice. From there, you can see when you're going to be charging as well. You can, oh, that's really nice. You can schedule it out at certain times of the day as well. So if you only wanted to charge during off-peak hours, or if you wanted to charge strictly at certain times during the day. So let's say if you know your cheap electricity rates are going to be 8 o'clock p.m. until, and let's go 5 o'clock a.m., you've got that flexibility. So you're only going to charge the vehicle up in that specific window. If you don't like what you've done there, you could cancel it out if you want to. You can adjust it literally any way that you want. Only on peak, off peak, etc. Really cool. Or you can just turn it off. And then you can also schedule your climate settings on top of that. So when you're connected, what do you want your climate to be set to? So obviously in the wintertime, you want to be a little bit warmer. Summertime, a little bit cooler. So you can set it at different times of the year. And then big benefit there is that when you're scheduled to come on, you're also going to have your climate control settings turn on as well. Really cool. What charge percent do you want to go to based off of where you're currently charging? Really useful. So, I mean, obviously if you're DC supercharging, you want to go max 80%. If you're at, let's say a public charger, you only want to charge up to a certain amount. You've got that flexibility. Cool. Some advanced settings as well. So when you're DC supercharging, what percentage do we want to go up to? If you're AC charging, same idea. You can tweak out the charging current. Battery conditioning mode as well. So very, very useful for winter time for low temperatures. There's a utility mode inside of this. And what that's going to do is essentially use the vehicle as a big battery. So if you wanted to charge up lights, audio, things like that, like useful, I like that specifically for camping. So if you wanted to use this thing while camping or glamping, you've got that flexibility. Smart regenerative braking, so we can control that using the paddle shifters on the steering wheel itself, but it's a few different options for deceleration. So one of the big benefits there is that if you're on, let's say, the high mode there, and you take your foot off the accelerator, it's going to slow you down extremely rapidly. But that's also going to help out with your regenerative braking as well. So you've got a few different ways you can do it. Gentle if you want more of like a traditional internal combustion engine feel. Strong, if you want more like one pedal driving. And then you do have the iDrive as well by pressing the left hand shifter or the left hand paddle shifter on the steering wheel a few times. Charging connector. So do you want the charge connector or do you want it never locked while charging or do you want it always locked instead? And then you've got different audio props as well when the vehicle's charging. It's kind of neat. So some EV only settings that are available there. But you can see there what's currently going on with your map and things like that. Nice. Perfect. From there, you've also got your map. So hopping in there, this thing obviously does have factory navigation. We can go full screen nav if you want to. You can search for addresses easily and look at menu along the top. And you can also change out what mode your map's in. If you want voice or sound effects. So when you're coming to an upcoming turn, do you want anything happening? Yes, no. So that's kind of nice because you can control the volume on each one of these things too. You can also... Go this way if you want. You can do a pinch to zoom this way instead. You can have it auto. So what that means is that it's automatically going to zoom in and out depending on how close you are to your end destination. Menu along the bottom. You can see what kind of what's nearby. So point of interest icons or categories. You can go based off of range there. 
You can save different locations, look at traffic information, or turn the display off. Turning the display back on again, you could search your addresses this way. So if you wanted to, you could just manually type in an address. You could also do things like look for coffee shops. So if you wanted to go to like Tim Hortons, Starbucks, whatever the case may be, just going to select one that's farther away. There we go. And you can set it as the destination. Key Connect services are active now. We're going to say no to that. We can select through, so you've either got a recommended or an alternate route that's available. So if you wanted to go the long way, short way, you can add in a waypoint. So if you wanted to stop somewhere else along the way, like, I don't know, maybe you wanted to stop and grab some food before you went to Tim Hortons, you've got that flexibility. So you're essentially creating multiple waypoints, and then we're going to connect, or calculate, sorry, calculate the route, and there we go. That's how we're going in order to get there. Or we can do an alternate route and go different ways. Once you're there, you can avoid certain things. So if you wanted to avoid ferries, toll roads, you wanted to avoid carpool lanes and things like that, and then just start guidance. And there we go. You can cancel out instead if you want. And then because we've already searched for the route there, you can press the button there to search, and you can see both of the addresses that we've previously searched for. You can also go home or work address. And one of the big benefits of entering in your home or work address is that you can push the voice command prompt and say navigate to home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be, and it'll go to either the addresses that you've saved there. Pushing the button along the top there gives us the option to turn the display off. So very straightforward. That's the basics of using factory navigation. Next up is the navigation menu. So same idea, you can search for addresses, look at point of interest icons, save places, cancel route, you can add in multiple favored destinations along the bottom. One of the big benefits there, I did mention pressing the voice command prompt and saying navigate home, but if we were along the bottom when we went to our nav menu, you could just do an easy button press to get to any of your favorite destinations instead. So very straightforward to use this thing. Oh, and then, oh, I guess while we're here, let's look at some settings. So you've got a series of different navigation settings that are available. Nothing too crazy, like your basics. Do you want to avoid things like toll roads, ferries, etc.? Do you want a set type of guidance, so either interval or cumulative? So how much distance do you have to go versus how much distance do you have left? Navigation voids guidance. So there's nothing too, too exciting here, but you've got details guiding the views, border crossing information, showed previous destinations. So with your destinations, do you want to show them, save them? So if you're lending your vehicle out, you don't want people to see the addresses that you've, current, you've gone previously, you could delete them all or just never have them save at all. Alerts for camera distance, some basic map settings that are available. So map mode, 2D, 3D, etc. Auto scale means it's automatically going to zoom in and out just depending on how close you are to your end destination. Font size, do you want it larger or smaller font instead? Your vehicle symbol color, so what Star Trek symbol do you want to use? And then your auto scale features with some other options for GPS data and things like that. So nothing too crazy there. But that's the basics of using factory navigation inside of this. Next up, adding in a phone. So you can see there, there are a few phones that were connected previously, but I'm going to add in a new phone. It's going to go to Kia. Make sure that the pins match up and they do. So we're going to go pair. Do we, allow, do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no to that one. But as of right now, the phone is connected to the vehicle, which is great. So you could jump into your phone now, so since the vehicle, oh, the phone's connected. It says, yeah, so all of these things are saying no because I selected no on the phone. But I mean, obviously, if you set it up that way, you'd be set to go. You've got your dial pad. You can see what's currently going on with your connection levels, battery levels, and a few other things as well. So you could dial through this way. You could also do a voice command prompt. So you press and hold long way in order to be able to activate Siri instead. So if you wanted to activate your Siri Assistant, you've got that flexibility. Now, the vehicle does have support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately, it's a wired connection. So, in order to be able to set yourself up, it's going to plug into the USB port there, opposite end of the phone, or just plugging ourselves in. There we go. Do you want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. Otherwise, when the phone's locked, it just wouldn't work. You want to hit OK. And we're technically connected, so you're just going to hit Apple CarPlay and look at this. Beautiful. Stretched across the entire screen. I mean, this thing looks solid. I love it. So 
you've got your map application that you can search if you had audio going, if you have your calendar up there as well. Along the side, you've got your current time, connection level, which map application was last opened up. So if we go to Apple Maps, it's going to change it out. Which radio or music app was last opened up. So if you were listening to podcasts and a few other things, that's going to launch there. And then this one essentially is like which miscellaneous app. So your phone, calendar settings, and things like that. But this is nice. And you've got Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze. No pinch to zoom capabilities. So zooming in and out this way on Apple Maps. But you can change up between different headers. Search, search for destinations, previous destinations. Same idea on Google Maps. So you open Google Maps. This one, no pinch to zoom capability either. We have to go here, minus plus. You can search for previous destinations, or you can avoid things like highways, toll roads, ferries, and things like that. So you could rely on your phone navigation instead, or you could just go through your the navigation that's built right into this screen. This little button is going to get you to this little icon view, or back to the main screen there. You can swipe through. Okay. One other option that's available too, so I'm playing media right now through the phone, but if you wanted to, you could also, you've also got the flexibility of connecting back to the radio inside of the vehicle. So if you wanted to go through AM, FM, Sirius XM this way, you've got the flexibility, and then you could just jump back into CarPlay instead. So you do have that available as an option, but this is so, so nice. It's good. Now, one nice thing that you're going to find inside of this vehicle is that you've also got the flexibility of adjusting this out. So... On your phone, if you jump into general settings, CarPlay, find your vehicle. You can forget it, allow CarPlay while the phone's locked, or you can customize the setting. So if you wanted to, you could change out podcast location, etc. If you wanted to delete some things, you've got that flexibility, and it fully removes them from the vehicle. So you can see there, it's fully removed. It does technically add them in, but if you wanted to, you can rearrange these things. If you've done too much to it, you can reset reset and it's just going to bring you back to your factory default screen there instead so very straightforward to use this thing just nice if you go into setup along the very bottom device connections you can see what's going on with a few other things so device connections here so tons of different options that are available so right now this thing oh, is connected over carplay but if we were to unplug I could reconnect if I wanted to. So I can reconnect to either the car for audio or for phone or for both if we wanted to. So it's very straightforward to do it. And then just hopping back in, if I want to, I can do a drag if I wanted to make this the preferred device instead. Moving back, device connections, into Bluetooth prompts. So you can either play your mute prompts, go into privacy mode. You can also look at your options here. So we can go split screen, Apple CarPlay, full screen, whatever the case may be. So if we go full so split screen on this one and just plug back in, I want, to, I want to show you what this looks like. So it's reading USB. In just a second there, go back home, CarPlay. So if you wanted to split screen instead, you've got that flexibility. And then we can kind of go out if you wanted to go up and down for your map that way. Or you can go up and down to go to all of your other vehicle apps there instead. So if you wanted to kind of go split screen, you do have that flexibility. Or, I mean, you saw there... Boom, unplug if you wanted to go that route. So I have quite a little bit of information, but that's how you set up an iPhone inside of this vehicle. Next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So all you're going to do on the vehicle here, you could go into phone, but I'm connected to the iPhone right now. So if I press this button, that's going to let me swap into any other previously connected phones, but I want to set up a new one. So all you're going to do is go into setup on the very bottom right side, device connections, device connections, and you can add a new device now. And then all you're going to do on your Android, you're going to scan, find the vehicle name, pins match up, so let's pair. Oh, there we go. Fully connected as of right now. There we go. And this is kind of neat. So I've actually got the iPhone connected for both the audio and for the phone itself, but you've got the flexibility of going one or the other. So that's a cool thing. So you can't be connected to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay at the same time, but if you wanted to, you can connect to one for audio and one for phone. 
And then same idea, you can also do a drag and drop that way if you wanted to set one as the priority instead. Really, really nice that you've got that available as an option. Jumping back home, you can go into your phone now, go to your dial pad, you can make calls, same thing along the bottom. You can see what's going on with your, all of your connections there. Now, one thing, this thing also. Oh, and again, that said no, just because I selected no to all of these different options. So I'll allow access to messages and things like that. I've pressed no. Now, you do also have the option of going through Android Auto, but it's got to be a USB connection. So connecting through, opposite end of the cable, just plugging in. And do we want to connect Android Auto? Yes. Okay. All right, so is that it? Phone projection. Well, I do notice that it happens sometimes in Android Auto, so I'm just going to connect through again. That should. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. Perfect. All right, and launching into Android Auto. Three, two, one. So fully connected along the screen there. You could, same idea what we saw on the iPhone side. So for Google Maps, you could also look at route options to avoid toll roads, ferries, and things like that. You've got what's currently going on with your connection, current time, maps. You could technically go folder screen instead if you want to. Or you can go to your voice assistant if you want. Push the button along the very bottom to get that little split screen. Or you can go split screen this way instead. One thing is that this the phone does have Waze installed on it. But I mean, as you can see there, Waze is not available as an option. But I mean, still tons of different options that are available. And then if you just unplug... That's going to unplug you from the vehicle there. And then you can go phone projection. And then you can go phone if you want you to hop back into the phone. You can do a simple device swap if you wanted to switch out to any of the other phones you have connected. Or you go into setup, device connections, device connections. And if you wanted to delete a device, you're just going to go delete device. Select whichever ones you want deleted. Delete. Yes. And as you can see there, one and two, and both devices are now deleted. And it's that simple setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of this vehicle. Next up, hopping back home. So those are the basics of phone, phone projection. Phone projection, the reason why that would never work is because you're not actually connected over USB. So phone projection you're going to use in order to connect to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Voice memos are available. So if you wanted to record a memo right onto the vehicle, you've got that flexibility. You can adjust some climate settings available there as well. So you could drag and drop in the inside there, move to auto mode, driver only mode, so you don't have dual zone capability. You can have it going to windshield, face, feet, some sort of combination of all of the above. And it's kind of cool because you can adjust it this way, or you can also adjust it through the center stack when you're in the climate options there instead. So you've got a few different options that are available. You can go heat. Sync means that you're going to sync the passenger side to whatever the driver's side is. And you can recirculate air in a few ways. You can auto dehumidify, smart ventilate, and then auto defrog, defrost, and things like that. So I always honestly just recommend keeping the majority of these things on. If you're a little bit more climate conscious, you do have an eco mode capable capability there on top of that. But honestly, for most people, I think setting it up this way, just leaving it as the default is the way to go. Next up, into valet mode. So you do need key connect activated, but that's essentially going to lock the screen out so the valet drivers and other people can't look through the phone or can't look through the vehicle, I should say. Quiet mode, what that's going to do is automatically lower all of the different volumes inside the vehicle. Useful if you've got little ones sleeping in the back. You can see what's going on with HD radio, radio itself. So you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM that are available there. USB stick with MP3s also available as an option. And then, I mean, obviously, if you were connected over your phone, you could stream Bluetooth audio that way instead. But so many options. You can search for different stations this way if you want. You could also scan this way, look at a full channel list and see everything that's going on, saving things as favorites. And that's the same thing for, oh, for, so you go to AM, FM, Sirius XM, you've got all the different stations that are currently available based off of where you are. So if you're new in an area, you're not really sure what you can listen to. You can go there. You could save presets as well. So whenever you find a station that you want to save, just press the little star icon, and that saves it underneath one of your available presets. You could reorder them as well. So if you have a preference of which one is where, 
or you can delete presets. So if you've accidentally saved one, you're like, yeah, I don't like listening to these guys. You could delete it out instead if you want to. So as you can see there, all of our basic stations instead. And then just going back, you've got different presets that are available there as well. Again, jumping into station lists, moving back home into setup. And setup, there are a ton of different options. So before I jump into setup, let's go last screen. So you've got radio or media. Jumping into media, you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, Sounds of Nature. If you had your phone hooked up, you could go over Bluetooth if you wanted to stream that way. You could go Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on top of that. So it's very simple to set it up. And then if you have a USB stick with MP3s on it, you can also plug yourself in that way. I'm going to do a little audio test. So, in oh, this went right to it. Okay, so I plugged in USB and it just auto played, which is a really, really cool feature that this thing has. But there are a few different speaker systems that are available. You're going to get six speakers standard inside of the majority of the trim levels. So most trim levels of the EV6. There is the option for an upgraded Meridian audio system instead. That Meridian is going to definitely sound better than the standard six speaker. But I'm going to play around with the with the audio here. So I'm going to drop the bass down a little bit. And I'm going to, I'm going to crank the bass, I should say, and then drop the treble a little bit so you can hear it. But the six speaker... It's still solid. Like, hold on, let's go. I'm going to go from zero volume and then crank up so you can hear what this is like. And that was just at half volume. So increasing the bass a little bit, dropping the treble a little bit gives it a really good sound. It's great. And these things are kind of neat. So if you prefer... more of these like ambient sounds, you do have that flexibility. So it's kind of nice. Kia Connect, this is a demo vehicle. So unfortunately I can't go through Kia Connect services, but what essentially would let you do a few different things. So look at weather, vehicle diagnostics and things like that. There is an app that you can get on your phone as well for remote starting and a few other things. If there are any active notifications available on the vehicle and also a scan for the QR code for the vehicle itself. Moving into setup, starting off with vehicle settings. So you've got a series of different ones. So it's kind of nice because you can see everything along the side and a ton of other ones available. So starting with some driver assistance, you can look in convenient settings. So different drive assist settings that are available, depending on which model of the vehicle that you're in. So this thing is all tied into. So lane change assist and things like that. Lane change assist is an interesting one because when you've got your blinker going, so left side, right side, if there were, if this, the, if what's going on next to you, the left or right side, if the lane's free, it can automatically change lanes for you. It can automatically change your highway speed as well, just based off of your GPS data. And then if you've got the smart cruise control system going, it can automatically slow you down as well. It is a very robust system. You've got different options for speed limit. So if you want to get a warning, if you want nothing to happen, if you're going a little bit too fast, and then speed limit assist means it's automatically going to lower the speed for you. So let's say if it goes from 80 to 60, it can automatically slow you down. Warning timers with methods that are available. So safety priority means that it's going to lower volume and same idea. So if you want to get notifications for different warnings, yeah, there you go. If you want those warning noises to happen, yes or no, but you could toggle all of this stuff off. Attention warning. So this is a neat one because as you go to drive, let's say if you're preoccupied for a second and the car in front of you leaves or drives, it's going to let you know that the leading vehicle is also departed inattentive driver warning if you start to veer over too many times without signaling it's going to tell you that you should probably take a break on top of that you've got forward safety assist so cross traffic alert means if somebody's coming perpendicular from you so from the left or right side it can let you know it can actively let you know and take control of the vehicle in case it can give you a warning or nothing will happen lane safety assist same idea so a vehicle can also help you from leaving the lane. So it's essentially gonna keep you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go, do nothing if you want, or just give you a warning. So a few options available. Blind spot safety. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, you've got that option so it can let you know, it can give you a warning, nothing will happen. And then these are two neat ones. So blind view monitor, 
if you use your left turn stick, so look on the left or right side, it's going to utilize the side mounted cameras to let us know if somebody's next to us. And then safe exit assist on top of that. You can also have it let you know if there's a potential obstacle as you go to open the doors up and things like that. Surround view monitors available, rear active assist, and like all of these safety settings, you could turn them off. Rear cross traffic alert works the same way as the forward cross traffic. So if somebody's coming perpendicular, it can let you know or it can automatically brake for you as well. Smart cruise control, a few different options that are available based off of your current style. Convenience settings, which we've already seen all of these things as well. So with driver assistance settings, you've got a series of different ones that are available. So you can jump into either all of the settings by going through. You can just kind of scroll up and down. Or if you're after specific ones like parking safety, blind spot safety, and things like that, and you can jump into any of these ones individually instead. Or you could also search if you want to go that way. Different options for drive mode. So how do we want to brake? Do we want either normal or sport braking for dynamic performance? Love it. Moving back, climate control options, different options for the cluster screen. So do you want different things to be illuminated so you can adjust the brightness of the cluster screen as well as the infotainment screen there? Blue light filters are available, so useful for later on at night if things get a little bit too dark out. It's essentially going to get rid of the blue light inside of the screen. And then some basics for the camera as well. So as you go into reverse, do you want different parking lines and things like that showing? You can change up the cluster theme as well, so you can either link it to the drive mode. So if you push the drive mode button, it's going to change up the dynamic look of the cluster screen itself. You could select what's showing up inside of the cluster as well. So do you want the blind view monitor, icy road warnings, and things like that? And then do you want to play a welcome sound? Climate control settings, which we've already seen. Different climate features and things like that. So do you want to be able to do defog, defrost, auto defog, etc. Different options for a seat. So seating access is the big one there. So when you get out of the vehicle... If you turn the, well, when you turn the vehicle off, it's essentially going to lower and back the seat up, either an extended amount, normal amount, or nothing. So big benefit to either of these settings. So off means that the seat's never going to move. Normal means that it's going to lower and back it up so you can get into the vehicle a little bit easier. Different options for lights. So there is ambient light available inside the vehicle. You can adjust what color light is showing up, and that's just in different options. You can have it link to whatever drive mode that you're in, and you can also have it dim when it's dark outside. Really nice. One touch turn signal, so listen to this. So it's either going to be one flash, three, five, or seven when you go left or right. Your welcome lights on the outside of the vehicle and approach lights later on at night. Headlight delay when you go to lock the vehicle, do the lamp stay on for 15 seconds or just automatically turn off? And then high beam assist. So if your high beams are on, and the car in front of you is oncoming, it's automatically going to dim your high beams for you so you don't blind the driver in front of you. The door, do you want to have the vehicle lock automatically when you go to shift or when you enable it on speed, so when you start driving? And same idea when, you, when it unlocks, when you shift into the park, when you turn the vehicle off, or strictly when you open the doors. Two press unlock on the key fob. Do you want to disable the power lift gate? How fast or slow do you want the lift gate to open up? How high do you want it to open up as well? So you can select a setting on the outside by pushing the button on the lift gate, or it can go to certain heights as well. Smart lift gate means that as long as you've got the fob on you, you can also walk towards the back side of the vehicle, and that means that the vehicle door will automatically open up. Really neat. And then you can also use the, via the key fob in order to open up the windows. So let's hop outside and I'll show you how those settings work. Taking a peek at the key fob for the vehicle. So typical Kia styling. Along the one side of the fob, you've got the lock button, unlock button, trunk release, horn or panic alarm, and then there's also the button to get the emergency access key along the very bottom. But emergency access key is useful, so just in case the fob's ever died, you do have, you can see there, the access in order to be able to use the emergency access key there instead. But other side of the fob, you've got the remote start, and then you can also have the vehicle help you with parking. So in order to use that feature, it's pretty neat. So you can remote start on the fob, you press the lock button, and then all you're gonna do is press and hold the little circle button. And that's remote start of the vehicle, so you can see the screen turn on there. And then you can also use this button in order to move the vehicle forwards or backwards to get in and out of tighter spaces. You need to be a little bit closer to the vehicle, but to use it, all you do, press and hold, and watch this. So 
So the vehicle backing itself up right now, you can release in order to stop it. And same idea, in order to move it forward, you have to just press and hold again. And that's going to start moving the vehicle forward. So inching it forward into different spots as well. And you can see inside of the infotainment screen that everything is lit up. And then you could press this if you wanted to turn the vehicle off. And then lock it up. So very straightforward. There are a few other cool key fob tricks that you've got inside the vehicle too. So you can press the unlock button twice and on the second button press, hold it. Watch this. So you're going to go one, two, and hold. You could also release it and then you just press again. So you can roll down the driver's side windows. So you can roll them down, but it is a manual back up, unfortunately, but still it's nice to be able to air this thing out. The other option, lock the vehicle and walk away. You have to get about 10 to 15 feet away for about 10 to 15 seconds. And what we're doing right now is we're going to utilize the smart lift gate feature. So as long as the key, the vehicle's locked for at least 10 to 15 seconds, you get a little bit further away and then you start walking towards the back end of the vehicle. Watch this. So the fob's here. See that beeping? So the vehicle can automatically lift the lift gate up for you instead. So there are multiple heights that are available. This essentially is the highest available height. You could do a user selectable height instead. So you bring the lift gate down to whatever you'd like to. Just press and hold there for a few seconds in order to lock it in place. So if your garage is a little bit lower, a little bit higher, whatever the case may be, you can easily adjust the lift gate out if you want to. You can close it. There's a button on the lift gate itself. You can close it that way. Just to the left hand side of the steering wheel, you can use the key fob instead if you want to. So there are a ton of different options available. Really useful having these settings. Different options for convenience, so rear occupant alert. You go to turn the vehicle off, it'll tell you inside of the cluster to check the back seats. When, you're getting, when do you need the vehicle to be serviced, so automatic intervals, and wireless charging as well. Use your uh, device connections, which we've already seen. So we've got all of our active devices. We can reorganize, look at system information. System info is actually a cool one. So if you go to device connections, system info, vehicle name, this is where you go in order to be able to adjust your vehicle name out. So if you want to change it to something unique for yourself, you've got that flexibility. You can also change out the pass key. Definitely recommend changing that up to something that's not 0000. And then we saw there, split screen or full screen, CarPlay, Android Auto, etc. Next up, different options for user profiles, which we've already seen. Changing up profiles or setting up individual profiles voice recognition prompts. Do we want to reduce the number of prompts? So when you press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, we just won't get as many notification prompts and things like that. But I mean, I definitely recommend getting used to this because I mean, as you see there, there are so many things that you can do inside of this thing. Like it's wild. Open up lift gate. You can close the lift gate. You can adjust the seat, turning on seat warmers, ventilated seats, open and closing the charging door and things like that. So get used to every setting because there are so many things that you can do inside of this thing. Honestly, just recommend spending like an hour and getting used to the settings because it is really, really nice. Setting layout. So if you wanted to change it to either a white mode, black mode, auto means that it's going to go between either. That's essentially like a daytime or nighttime mode, just depending on how, yeah, there you go. Just depending on how bright it is outside. It's a matter of preference. I mean, I like that black mode is actually nice. And we can have it scheduled at certain times. So if you want the dark mode to come on at certain times or let the vehicle determine when the mode should come on. Cluster selection, same idea. Do you want the cluster screen to go based off of the drive mode or do you want to have it locked out to a different theme instead? You can change up the screensaver. So when the display's off, do you want nothing showing an analog clock, a digital clock with different watch faces that are available as well? So let's say if we adjust there, turn the display off, You've got a unique watch face, or you can just go digital clock instead to get to a different mode. So a few options. And then inside of your split screen, what do you want showing up? And in which order do you want it showing up in? So a few different options there. Series of different ones for display, which we've already seen. Buttons, you've got a few individual buttons. So two on the steering wheel, and then one just down the center stack there as well. So when you press different buttons, what do you want showing up? So those are essentially your unique steering wheel buttons. 
and then your plus minus button's there. So up down, what do you want it to do? So you've got a few different options that are available. Honestly, I just recommend for some of these ones, like these custom buttons, home is a pretty useful one. When you press one of the buttons on the steering wheel, do you want it to go privacy mode, ending a phone call, go to the AV screen, etc.? Your mode button, I just recommend selecting everything there. And well, especially the audio sources that you would normally listen to. And that means that when you press that mode button on the steering wheel, it's going to change out between any of these available pre any of these available stations, I should say. And moving back, series of general settings, nothing too crazy there. You've got system information. You can change your date and time out instead. Some of these things are grayed out because it's automatic. But if you delete automatic, you can tweak it out if you want. You can go to that 24 hour mode, so military time instead. Change out your language, so English, French, Spanish, or Korean. Change out your keyboard, measurement units, so if you want, miles or kilometers, whatever the case may be. And that's going to tweak out the cluster screen and a few other things as well. How do you want your energy consumption measured? Media options? So basic. And then you can do a factory reset. So if you're selling the vehicle, whatever the case may be, you can delete the driver info or reset everything to bring the vehicle back to a default instead. Moving down, there's this nice highlight that follows all the way through. Nice texturized feel along the dash. You've got dual zone climate control inside of this thing. You can sync it up to whatever the driver's side is. So let's say if you have a passenger side set to something different, hit sync, automatically brings it that way. But one thing that I kind of like about this, like you've got all of your basic climate control settings, but you can also hit this button and then it goes to a series of other buttons. So you've essentially got hot button presses to get to your map to get to navigation settings, if you want to get to your radio, different media and things like that. So these things essentially function as either buttons for your climate control or for audio and files and tuning and things like that, which is kind of cool. I like it. But moving down the center stack there, you've got heated seats standard inside of this with the option for ventilated seats. Those ventilated buttons would just be on the outside depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Heated steering wheel button available there and it's heated steering wheel all the way around, which is great. I love that. But like flat bottom steering, which is kind of cool. Little push button start. Nice metallic highlight that wraps along the side. This is kind of interesting highlight that wraps all the way through too. You've got your reverse neutral and drive and then park. So what you're going to do brake, neutral, reverse, drive, etc. Back down to park instead. You've got your rear view camera. So you push that, you can see what's going on behind you, but you've also got a full 360 view instead. So if you drop yourself into reverse, see what's going on as we go back, you could do this like neat little swing out view instead. So low speed, this is so cool. Low speed situations, you can see what's going on all the way around you. I love, love this graphic display. It is so, so cool. I'm pulling this thing back up so you've got a few different views that are available and then you can also zoom in and out on certain parts of the vehicle on top of that which is kind of nice little gear icon lets you show a few other things on top of that solid i love that view though so good auto hold setting so what that one's going to do it's a basic safety setting but with auto hold turned on if you go to drive the vehicle you come to a complete stop you take your foot off the brake the vehicle's not going to move so it's a basic safety setting and then the beeping that you get as you back up, if that drives you nuts, you could toggle it off if you want to. We've got a few cup holders there. Wireless charge pad, which is available as an option in most trim levels. And then there's also a little storage space. And it's literally just storage, but I mean like half wrist deep, which is kind of cool. The overall styling here matches up. Like the styling of the armrest matches what's going on to the dash as well. And even the seats. Looks good. One thing I like about Kia seats is that you've got power points back there. So along both the driver passenger side. Moving down, you've also got a series of other power points there. So you've got traditional USB, USB type C, another USB C, 12 volt, and then a nice amount of storage space there as well. Just good. Up overhead, auto dimming rear view mirror, typical Kia styling there with your tow mode and then SOS, light controls. This one would, te you technically have the option for a sunroof inside of this thing, which this one, I mean, obviously doesn't have. It is in some of the higher trims of the vehicle. The visor in this thing, nothing too crazy. Business card holder in the outside, vanity mirror built in, 
And this thing has that little light overhead. And then this extends out to block all of the sun that might be hitting your face, which is great. This is good. And then the only other thing to point out, you've got a little assist handle, and that's for the driver and for the passenger side in the first and for the second row. All right, so hold on. I'm going to set the seat up for the way that I would actually drive. I'm good. So with the seat set up like this, like I said, I'm six feet tall with me having the seat set up the way I would traditionally do it. So like five plus inches of headspace up overhead. And with the driver's seat set up this way, I've got a, in the second row, I've got a great amount of knee space, great amount of foot space on top of that, which is amazing. And the nice thing is that the floor inside of the second row is fully flat. It's good. The seats inside of this, they're comfortable. They're not obviously quite as comfortable as the first row, but second row seat, still pretty nice. Now, one really nice thing. So the seats inside of the second row, we could fold them down this way instead. So rather than going through the trunk, if you wanted to fold the second row down, but one really cool thing is that you can also recline the seats a little bit. So if you want to relax, ride in style, whatever the case may be, you do have that flexibility. And that's the same for both the driver and for the passenger side. The styling back here is pretty good. I like all of the white stitching and just the overall seat design. It looks really, really good. There's a little vent control right along the pillars, the A pillar so right by the driver's seat and along the passenger side too. And then one thing I love about Kia vehicles, on the inside of both the seats, driver, passenger side, there are also USB type C power points. So you wanna charge some things up, you've got the flexibility back here too. In behind the first row seats, driver, passenger side, you've got pockets on both sides, which is nice. Anchor points for child seats, tethers in behind the seats. And then there are also a few little cup holders back here too. Up overhead is basic back here. There's not too much. Little control for the cabin lights. And then there's an assist handle on both the driver passenger side. There's a hook on the driver, but just the handle on the passenger side. But still, this is nice. It's nice and spacious. Three full-size versions of me would be a little bit tight for whoever's in the middle seat. But you've got younger family, people that don't mind going on shorter trips together three full-size versions, like three full-size adults, probably comfortably fit back here. The back end of the EV6 is pretty unique. So there was a nice black highlight along the bottom part of the bumper and the front end. There's a nice little black highlight along the bottom part of the bumper here. Nice little chrome highlight along the middle. Traditional Kia badge along the back, which is sharp. And then the EV6 badge is also pretty nice. Same font as the Kia logo. Because this is the GT line, you've got a little GT line badge. The badge that you get along the bottom right is gonna depend on the model of the vehicle that you're in. But a few things back here. Got the reverse sensing system, so that beeping that you get as you back up, it is available there. And then moving up, you're never gonna get a rear wiper inside of the EV6 whatsoever. I think that's one thing I would like to see, but I mean, you've got your rear defroster, the rear wiper are they're useful but i think just the way that this thing sits you shouldn't have too much issue with water droppage and things like that but overall i would say the styling back here is pretty nice the first time i did a walkthrough on this vehicle i was like where is the charge door because i was looking for like a traditional little cutout but i love the way that he has designed this thing so along the passenger side you've got the little cutout here and the charge door is just along the passenger side when the doors lock though, or when the vehicles lock, this thing is locked. So you actually have to unlock here, you push, and the door just pops open really, really nicely. There's a little charge indicator light. You've got your door closed, and then it does support both level one and level two charging on top of that. And then technically DC supercharging with your charge times being all over the place. So depending on if your rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, short range versus extended or long range battery instead. But general rule of thumb, typically like level one charging is, it's your shorter trickle charge. So, that, but benefit is that's just a regular wall outlet. So you wouldn't have to install a charge station or anything like that. The range inside of this thing is all over the place as well. So standard range, you're looking at 373 kilometers. Oh, that's fancy. Didn't know it was going to do that automatically. Kia, that's a really cool safety feature. It automatically closes just in case. There is a button along. Oh, and the door is fully locked even too after a second. That's really cool. Just in case you accidentally unlocked it. But 
The range inside of this thing is all over the place. You're at least 332 kilometers in the long range GT, 373 kilometers or 232 miles in the standard range. And then you're maxing out at 499 kilometers or 310 miles when you look at the rear wheel drive long range. So rear wheel drive long range technically will get slightly more kilometers than the all wheel drive, but all wheel drive, I would definitely recommend for the winter time. Now, if you uh, are looking at towing inside of this thing, it's possible you can get an aftermarket hitch receiver if you wanted to, and then getting into the trunk of the vehicle, there's a little release back here. So on the key fob itself, and then just to the right hand side of the backup camera, there's a button there you can push in order to get inside the trunk. And honestly, there's not a whole lot back here. Like it's nice and simple, but there is a great amount of space back here too. Along the right hand side, the only thing you're gonna find is a release for the seat. Off to the left side, there's a little 12 volt power point and then a seat release on top of that. So one nice thing is that you could fold down the second row seats from the doors if you want to, like from the second row, but you can also Hold a little lever there for both the left side or the right side if you wanted to be able to fold the seats down that way instead. And when you have the seats folded down, there is a boatload of space back here. Now, the measurements that you're looking at for the depth specifically, that's under the assumption that you're going from where the door is going to shut just behind the armrest. So if you're a little bit shorter and if your seats are up a little bit, you'll get a teeny bit more space, but this is still plenty spacious. Now, other thing, you've got just your regular carpeted liner back here. There is the option if you want to do like a WeatherTech aftermarket instead, but you can easily slide this thing out. And there's the factory charge cable that you're going to find inside of this thing. On top of that, there's also a little part that we can lift up, and that's going to be for the tire mobility kit. So no spare tire inside of this thing, but you do have access to Kia roadside assistance. So if you ever pop a tire, you ever need an emergency boost in case your vehicle's died that is available there as an option. And that was everything you need to know about the Kia EV6. I hope you learned a thing or two. But if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. And I did mention you can find a build link for this specific EV6, along with the contact information for Durham Kia down in the description of this video. But if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until I see you next time, take care.